Norway just did something no other country has come close to, not even a little bit. In April 2025, last month, 97% of all new cars sold were fully electric. But here's the twist, because there's more to this story than meets the eye. Tesla's grip on the market is slipping super fast. In fact, their market share has dropped by more than half in just a year. So why is that happening? Let's take a deep look into it. Let's look at the data, the numbers, find out why. Out of 11,286 new passenger vehicles sold in April, almost 11,000 of those were full battery electric vehicles. So that's 97% of the entire market sold in April uh, was battery electric vehicles. Just 51 of the cars sold was actually hybrid. And that is down from 1,200 the month before. So that's because of uh, the government. The government changed on April 1st the tax rules. So plug-in hybrid electric vehicles lost their favorable tax treatment and instantly just stopped selling, literally overnight. So zoom out to look at the broader picture. Year to date, so all of this year so far, Norway has registered 42,880 cars and almost 40,000 of those are pure electric. So that's 92.3% uh, of the market share are full EVs across the first four months of 2025. So now after the tax changes for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, the total number of full battery electric vehicles is going to jump above that, probably well above 97% actually, like it was in April. So April was 97% and that was the first month since these new rules that are basically stopping hybrid selling. So let's put that into perspective. In April 2023, for example, Norway was 84.2% EV share, and in just two years they've jumped another 13%. So the rate of adoption has accelerated as incentives have matured and become more well known, and people have had more time to go in electric cars, and the, obviously the infrastructure has improved. Norway now has over 25,000 public charging points. Basically every petrol station has a fast charger in it and I actually know somebody who uh, works at a petrol station. They hate electric cars passionately. I mean really passionately. Of course they're about to lose their job obviously like I, I joke with them. But the country has a goal. By the end of the 2025 100% of new car sales should be zero emissions. That's not a dream. It is actually happening. So with these kinds of numbers they might even hit that, I think, before December. But are they banning petrol or diesel cars? That is the question I suspect you'll want answered, I guess, in this video. Here's where I think, personally, things get more interesting. You'd expect Tesla to be leading in a market like that, right? So the numbers that, you, you know, they're going the wrong way very fast for Tesla. In April 2025, Tesla had only 8.6% of the market share in Norway. That is actually down from 18% the same month the year before, a drop of almost 50%. And if you compare that to April 2023, when Tesla nearly had 20%, a lot, that is a lot of market share lost by Tesla. And there are some really good reasons why. So the Model Y was the top selling individual model with 869 um, units sold, but the Model 3 only managed 107. And that is down from the year before, the same month, 300, which is terrible. So overall, Tesla was outsold more than two to one by Volkswagen in April. And that's a big deal. And over the first four months of 2025, their market share is sitting just below 11% compared to 18% and then 20 the year before that. So it's obviously, it's a big deal. Hi folks, my name is Ben Alexander. I've lived in Norway for many, many years and I've seen the infrastructure change over the years. And I remember uh, talking with a guy actually back in, I think 2010, who bought a small electric car and was raving about the incentives being great. And he actually, I remember him telling me about the, the throttle pedal was actually a speed pedal rather than a power pedal. So I can, I've actually, you know, I've seen the, the change in Norway happen and I actually think it's for the better, obviously. It's cleaner, it's quieter. People prefer driving, I think, in electric cars in Norway, from what I can gather when I talk to people. So Volkswagens have always been a big deal. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I always used to see Volkswagens around in Norway. And now you still see lots of Volkswagens in Norway, more than any other country that I've ever been in outside of Germany. So Volkswagen took 20%, 20.1%, sorry, of the market in April and had three of the top five models, which was the ID3, 
4 and 7 and the ID4 alone sold 800, more than 800 units. Toyota with the BZ4X was the third best selling car in Norway in April. Not bad, I think, for a car that was ridiculed when it was launched just literally a couple of years ago. And I always thought it was really great, even though it was definitely underwhelming in the specs and the charging and the efficiency and things like that. But still really, really nice. And uh, it's still, for some people, it's a Toyota, and that's what they care about. It's really, really nice. So it sold around 700 units in uh, April. Other rising brands as well in Norway were BYD, MG, and obviously the BYD Dolphin and Seal. They're both great cars. They've been gaining traction quite a lot in Norway, and uh, I'm wondering if they will make it into the top five. I'm not sure, but maybe they will, because they're very budget-friendly models. They feel just like Volkswagens. They're just from a Chinese company. That's the only difference. And more and more Chinese cars are popping up on Norwegian roads. So these brands are offering better deals, cheaper finance deals, and more fleet-friendly options, which is obviously something that Tesla have never been a big fan of. So let's talk about why Tesla is dropping in Norway. Tesla had a head start, but now nearly every automaker is making decent EVs. I think this is the number one issue for Tesla, in my opinion. In an EV empty market, Tesla did well, but in a market where Tesla are not the big fish anymore, they don't fare so well. And in Europe, especially Norway, Volkswagens and other, uh, other brands have stronger local relationships and dealer networks, which is a big deal, obviously. They always offer more variety from city cars to SUVs, Volkswagens. They're very good at that. Secondly, pricing and perception. Tesla's constant price uh, changes may be really confusing for a lot of people, quite off-putting, I think, for some people. And um, in the last 18 months, I think the Model Y has had at least four price adjustments. I'm not sure of the exact number, but it's at least four that I can think of. Combine that with, uh, obviously, Elon Musk's political controversies, of which there are a couple, uh, which, you know, don't always land well as well in prog progressive Europe, and brand loyalty starts to crack majorly. Norway, really good example of this, as far as I can see. I don't think it's the cars being bad being the reason why they're selling less of them, because actually they're not bad cars, really. Model updates and supply. Many of the Model Y registrations this year have been for the older version. The refreshed Model 3, dubbed Highland, uh, arrived late and hasn't filled inventory yet. So some buyers are waiting, others moved on and just got another car in large numbers, actually. And uh, number four, I would say that fleet and leasing deals. Tesla has never fully leaned into this. They've never leaned into fleet partnerships in Europe, especially Volkswagen and Toyota have. And in Norway, company cars are a big part of total registrations. So will Norway hit 100% EV sales in 2025? Honestly, I believe they will get 99%. I'm not sure they'll get to 100 unless, the, obviously, the government literally ban petrol and diesel cars, which they may do. I don't know, but it's possible, I suppose. Obviously, I think, I think personally, 99%. I think that we will see that by the end of the year. They're at 97% already, so let's see what this month is. Let's see what next month is, and I think we're going to see 97, 98, 99, and it will probably just sit at 99. Who's going to want to pay uh, for petrol and for, for hybrids with the extra tax? I don't see who's going to do, want to do that. And with plug-in hybrid electric vehicles practically gone due to the tax hikes and more fleet and company car purchases shifting to EVs, they're likely to hit just under 100% before the end of the year, I think, in my opinion. September, October, November, December, somewhere like that. According to the OFG, more than 60% of company car registrations in 2025 so far have been electric, fully electric vehicles. That's a huge chunk of the market moving in the right direction. So if they do hit 100%, it will be genuinely historic, a big, big deal. And uh, no country has ever reached full zero emissions uh, on new car sales, zero emission new car sales. None at all so far. Uh, obviously, Norway have floated just under that for a year or two now. So here's the big picture, in my opinion. EVs have won in Norway, clearly. People are very happy to buy them. There are a couple that don't want to buy them, but they'll have no choice soon. Basically, everybody's happy to buy them. But Tesla, they're not the winner anymore, clearly, with 8.6% of the market share in Norway in April and 11% for the year to date. And I suspect that's going to decline even further. They're being overtaken by traditional automakers who've caught up very, very, very fast. Tesla's still, you know, a great brand, 
but they've lost their monopoly on innovation, I think. And now it's about trust and service and local pr local pricing and stability. Norway shows us what happens when a country sets clear EV targets and is st sticking to them, really militantly sticking to them. And this is what happens to even the biggest players if they don't adapt. And here's something else that I think we should be watching. What happens when these same brands take this momentum across the continent to the rest of Europe? I think if Tesla continues to lose ground in Norway, it could be leading a leading indicator for what's coming in places like Germany, uh, the UK, Netherlands, for example. Big hitters for Europe, if you look at the, the big numbers for uh, EV sales in Europe, obviously. I think the UK was the largest country last year for EV sales. It was 400,000. So EV buyers today aren't just tech lovers. They're families and commuters and retirees, and uh, they want reliability, service, value. They want. Uh, they, don't, they don't necessarily want an iPad on wheels, necessarily. They want other stuff. They don't want fast acceleration, necessarily. That's not the big thing anymore. And this means that, basically, the industry is maturing because electric cars are just becoming the norm now, especially in countries like Norway. And that means that brands like Volkswagen and Toyota have much more room to shine. And I think the market has been undersaturated in the EV world in Europe. And now it's kind of starting to find equilibrium again, which is nice. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ben Alexander. Thank you uh, for your time. I don't, do, I don't take that for granted. If you found this video interesting or useful, give it a like. Please consider leaving a comment and subscribing. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. My question to you, what are your thoughts on Tesla's position in Europe, especially post Elon, Tr uh, Elon Musk becoming a little bit political, should we say? Put that in the comments. What's your opinion on that? Because that's really interesting.